I would say probably as of last year with reviewing a bunch of different podcast mics, I've grown an addiction to using podcast mics for various reasons, not just for YouTube videos. I actually rarely use it for YouTube videos exclusively for tech reviews and whatnot but just for business use. And when I reviewed the J-Laptop Go, I used this thing pretty extensively. I mean, almost every single day until I started getting different mics from Anchor and different headsets and whatever for review. But the reason why I love using USB plug and play microphones is there's no software I gotta worry about. There's no complications. It's just easily setting the input output to the microphone you plug in like the Talk Go. But now, we have a new budget king, in my opinion, of USB plug and play microphones, and that's the JLab Go Talk. So a different play on words. But the number one thing you're gonna notice before I plug this into my computer and get into the microphone test is the way sweeter design. I mean, when I'm on a video call and this, and you'll see it in the video, and I kind of have this right here or wherever, it just fits into the frame and fits into the video regardless of what I'm doing. JLab did provide this for review, not compensated, but I am really glad they provided this because I love this thing. So let's get into the microphone test and go from there. All right, now what you're hearing is the JLab Go Talk microphone. I'm talking at actually a pretty quiet volume just because I don't wanna yell into the microphone. I'm using Audacity to record this. And every time I do these mic tests, I feel like I gotta be careful. So one of the biggest things I have for the input volume and Audacity is I have it at about 45 for the input gain. Now I will be messing around with this microphone with all the input settings in a second. But first, I wanted you to hear how it sounds when it's more controlled instead of it being all over the place with messing with the gain and everything. So let's do a few mic tests here. First, let me tap the microphone and see how sensitive it is. Maybe you're bumping into the desk and things like that. You know, I'm just gonna be doing some random tests. Let's act like you're on a Zoom call and you take a drink of water. You know, I'm just really trying to be realistic. Like if you're on a call or something and you set that down, bang the table a little bit. Let me grab my ukulele as well. All right, now we got this thing. So let me play some of the strings and see how well that picks up. Maybe you wanna use this for music. And that's doing it on, not on the cardioid, but are uh, doing it on the cardioid, not the omnidirectional. So let me switch that here. Let me go omnidirectional now, which is what I have it at, and play some of the strings as well, doing it that way. And I'm sorry if that was a little loud. Let me set this down real quick. And let me switch back to cardioid real quick. So the reason why I did that though is really so you can hear if this is good for music and whatnot. So now let me just kind of mess around with the gain and also just see how that sounds, whether I'm talking at a quiet volume like this. I literally am talking pretty quiet. So let me speak a little bit louder. Maybe you get excited on a call or something and there's no control on the gain and maybe you just kind of want to whisper a little bit. All right, so let's go back to this microphone and adjust the gain manually here. So I have it halfway all the way to full and now the light blinks saying it was all the way up. Let me go back down. I'm gonna go all the way until it blinks saying that it's all the way down. Okay, now it's all the way down. Let me try to find the sweet spot of the middle again. Uh, maybe it was right there. Hopefully that sounds good because I think it was about right there. Now, this is about four inches away from my face. For me, I like to use a microphone like this the most on an actual microphone stand or a pole because even though it comes at the stand, which I'll show here in the B-roll, I'll show you how you add the stand and connect the stand that JLab provided and also how you add the bolt, the little lug nut or the little adapter, if you will, the screw adapter to connect it to something like this, which is really cool. Both of those are really simple options. And I love that JLab did that because yeah, if I already have this, it's cool to just add it and it's literally plug and play. I mean, everything about this microphone is plug and play. Now, even with Audacity, all you had to do was go to the input output for the JLab Go Talk. When I'm on Zoom, which I'll show a microphone recording a video call in a second on what that's like, and anything else that has soft phone features or whatever, that's all you gotta do. 
plug it via USB or USB-C. Most USB-C cables I have worked unless it was charging Pacific like the MacBook charging cable. Of course, that didn't work. It had to be like just straight USB to USB-C input output. Let me get into some flaws real quick before I get into a Zoom video test. Uh, the flaws that I noticed right away is there's no indicator on the gain, which is kind of frustrating because with the input on the gain, I want to know like what my favorite level is. So I know because most people with a plug and play microphone, they're not going to use audacity. They're not going to use uh, or know that when you go into zoom, you can auto adjust the gain and things like that. You know, each one of us has a different use. And so we want to just set it to our favorite gain level. And so on the front, there's a little mute button, which I actually will press to see how loud it comes in. All right. So you shouldn't have heard anything. And I did it one more time just to show that it worked, but also so you can kind of hear how loud pressing it is, you know, pressing it, uh, pressing it in is. And that's the other thing about these videos. They're raw, unedited, and I'm just going off the top. So um, some other things, though, uh, like I said, I wanted to mention is that you only can face the front way like this. You can't go like this. Otherwise, you know, it's going to distort the sound. And of course, on the back, you have your headphone jack and then your actually let me put it back this way on the back you have your headphone jack and your USB-C cable um, but besides that you know if you were to do omnidirectional and you had it this way of course it's going to sound okay but I think that's obviously not going to be for this kind of format of a video and that's going to be for if you have it on the stand and you're doing an interview with two people or a group of people or maybe music like you heard in the ukulele test so let me go back to this and then what I'll input here now is let me do a, uh, a video recording direct on my Mac using my Logic a Logitech camera and then a Zoom recording video. Now here's an example of what this would sound like if you're using it during a Zoom call. I have my window open and my door open so there might be some ambient noise but the camera I'm using is my Logitech stream cam. So what I'm going to do is this is what it would sound like if you're using the podcast mic, the JLab Go Talk. And then let's switch it to, let's say your computer speakers or your computer microphone, which in this case is a MacBook Pro, which is where you're listening to now. And I'm talking at the same volume. And this is why I say it's important to have a podcast mic like the JLab Talk, not just for podcast recordings, which is you're hearing this microphone now, I switched it again, but for professional use. Every time I use something like this, it just sets a better first impression. All right, I did that because for some reason, software and sound, even with a microphone like this, is different on a video call, whether it's Zoom, Loom, or the direct to the computer or whatever it is, for some reason, it's always different. But with all that being said, let me do one last test, and that's going to be sort of an ambient noise test. So I'm going to play Coffeeativity on my phone, and that's simulating a coffee shop, you know, like a lounge or a cafe or whatever, really loud environment. In case you have roommates or in case you are working out of an office that may get loud outside of your door or whatever, if you have like a shared office, and this is kind of, I'll put it behind me maybe. And then obviously if I put it in front of me, but that's how it would pick up any ambient noise. So hopefully that was helpful too. But at the end of the day, the big question is, do I think this podcast microphone, this microphone in general is worth $49? Absolutely. I mean, without question, I think it's worth it because of the features, because of the design most importantly, but even be actually most importantly, the sound itself <laughs> is why it's worthwhile. I said that a little backwards. So sound, the design, and then the price for what you're getting for all the features and everything. So if you're questioning what to get, just get this. I would even skip out on the other JLab products because I feel like those design, as far as the podcast microphones go, unless you get like the Talk Pro, that's for sure worth the money. I think it was on sale recently too. But for me, if you have less than 100 bucks, 50 bucks to be exact, and you're like, what do I get? I would just go with this. I mean, it's just, it doesn't get any simpler to this. It works across multiple platforms. As long as you have input output, forget it. You're good to go, which is pretty much why they call it that, if you think about it. No pun intended. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see y'all on the next one.